Margie said, I'm sick and tired of fooling around in the market. I'm sick of buying and selling. I want to take it easy. And I want something that's safe and sound and sensible. I want something that isn't going to go up today and down tomorrow. And I want to be able to go to Florida and go fishing in the Gulf without having to call my broker every day and having heart failure. So I told all my clients, uh, at least my special clients, that the only thing to buy are those bonds I told you about. Buy them. Buy them and then keep on buying them. After all, it's only money, and uh, the way taxes are today, nobody can keep anything and anyway. now for the final race results from the California tracks. At Hollywood Park in the state, Turn it up, will you? I want to hear it. First paying 680, 410, and 220. Black Marble second paying 960 and 520. Package Liquor third paying $3.20. In the seventh, Bouquet paying $18.20. also the attorney for the late Bart Saxon, who, as far as the New York police force and the rest of the world were concerned, had died a most shocking death, pun intended. I told Chuck that being a cold shower man myself, I sympathized with his late client, but... Well, where do I come in, Chuck? A client of yours has a regrettable accident. Those things happen. It isn't his death I've called you in about, Rick. Bart left a will. All his money goes to his wife. Well, if he wasn't careful, he was thoughtful. Yes, especially in view of the fact that they've been separated for the past six weeks. Maybe he still loved her. Did he leave much? Probably. I haven't had time to make a full survey of his assets. But for a young man, he did remarkably well. He was a, an investment counselor. You mean one of those guys who advise other people how to make and lose money? That's right. Well, you still haven't told me why you want my expensive but worth every penny of its services in this matter. Besides the will, he left a letter. So? About two weeks ago, he walked in here with a sealed envelope in his hand, and he told me to put it into my safe. And not to open it until either he told me to, or else in case of his death. Let's get it out. Read it. I'd love to, but it's missing. This morning, when I heard the tragic news, I went to get it out of my safe. The will was there, but the envelope wasn't. Anyone else know the combination, do you say? Nobody. But you know as well as I do, the average safe takes a good man with finger savvy and ears about three minutes to open. Do you think the letter changed the will? That's what I'm paying you to find out. Well, where can I find the separated Mrs. Saxon? At this address. And Rick, don't get rambunctious. After all, there's no evidence one way or another that she even knew there was a letter. Well, fear not, Charles. I shall be the soul of gumshoe discretion. Thanks, Rick. Your name's Diamond, isn't it? That's what it says on my Eagle Scout card. Why? Larry Courtney and you just made talk? Oh, you've been eavesdropping again. You know what your mother told you about that? <laughs> That's very funny. He's a very witty fellow, isn't he, Harry? He's funny. Mr. Diamond, believe me, I hate trouble, and you look like a fairly intelligent type young man, so listen carefully, and nobody's going to get harmed. Harry, drop, Mr. Diamond. Now, Mr. Diamond, acting on a small hunch, my employer had the idea that Mr. Courtney might hire somebody just like you to help locate a certain envelope that Mr. Courtney placed in the safe for the since-deceased Bart Saxon. He prefers for the entire matter to be forgotten. Who shall remember it? That's a very intelligent answer. May I assume, then, that you'll drop the whole thing per my employer's wish? After all, Bart Saxon had a terrible accident. He's dead. Nosing around ain't... isn't going to help things, is it? So let's leave everything that way, okay? My grammatical friend, uh, just out of morbid curiosity, suppose I should know. Uh, 
Harry, not in the head. Not this time. saw him before, huh, Rick? Yeah, must be out of town imports. Yeah, possibly. You know, that must have been some envelope. Somebody seems to think so. So, you heard all over, Bub? I heard all over. <laughs> but Rick, I had these drawn off from your description. Any good? Yeah. Put a little more hair on that one. Mm -hmm. That's great. Great. His uh, playmate called him Harry. Okay, I'll have him fill it up with description and shoot him right out. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to pay a call on Saxon's widow. She might shed a little light on the situation. Oh, you want me to send someone with you? No, I don't think so. Uh, two visitors, especially when one's a cop, might try to... No, you're probably right. Well, I might as well start checking up on Saxon's background. That's a very good thought, Mac. You keep thinking along those lines, and who can tell? You might even earn that lieutenant's pay you steal every week. Twice a month, wise guy. Now, on your way, I got things to do. You know, you're not this department's only problem, even if you are the biggest. Compliments will get you nowhere. Saxon. I wondered what kind of a woman I'd find. Six to five, she'd be heavy, frumpy, and pouty. I lost. It's vacuums. I'm all out of dirt. Uh, guess again. Magazines I don't need. What makes you think I'm selling it? Here? Then what's your pitch? It's about your late husband. Well, now, wait a minute. Maybe the news isn't all bad. Listen, any news about Bart Saxon's got to be bad. I'm awake you. Now, Mrs. Saxon, I'm a private detective. My name is Diamond. It's about your husband's will. I promise I won't take more than five minutes of your time. Will? That's right. Thank you. Okay, Moonbeam. Shoot, you've got about four minutes and 30 seconds left. Well, you know, of course, that you're your husband's sole beneficiary. No, I didn't. How come? Did the lover boy have a chance to change it before he died? We don't know. I'm not much on riddles. You got something to say, say it. All right. The lover boy also left a letter. It was sealed. So? It was stolen. So again? Well, your husband's lawyer thinks it might have been a codicil to the will. You have to speak in one syllable, handsome. I got my education in the front line at Minsky's. Well, it means an addition, a change. Cutting me out, you mean? Perhaps. If I understand you rightly, Buster, you don't know what it said. So until you do, I'm still in. That's right. And what do you want from me? Well, maybe you'd give us some information on the letter. Information? You mean you think I stole it? That is what you mean. Well, not exactly. Well, then what do you have on your precious little mind? We thought you might have some idea of what it said. And if it said I was out, then I might have stolen it. Well, to put it bluntly, yes. Well, you're wrong. I don't know anything about Bart's will or your codicil. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Hi, honey. Who's he? Black. Came about Bart's will. The crumb left me all his dough. No kid. How much? Well, we don't know exactly, but in any case, it'll be quite a while before anyone gets any money. How come if he left it? Well, she'll explain it to you. Look, Smiley, you hold out on seal and I'll bust you in a dozen pieces. Now, don't bend the suit. It bruises easily. Well, we don't... Listen, muscle man. You think somebody's been stealing something? Why don't you look up Bart's high society girlfriend? She steals men. Why not letters, too? High society girlfriend? That's right. I was okay during the tough years. But when hubby boy made some sugar and wanted to move up in the world, then I couldn't make the grade. What's his daughter of the 400's name? Manners. Lou Ann Manners. Where can I find her? You're the snoop around here, not me. Now get out of here. Your gracious manners exceeded only by your gentleman friend's courteous behavior. My deepest condolences for your great love. Westchester is the home of wealthy widows, busy millionaires, and uh, folks who've come up in the world. It was here I found Lou Ann Manners. Lovely, rich, and unless I miss my guess, sincerely unhappy over Bart Saxon's demise. Oh, that's right, Mr. Diamond. I went with Bart Saxon. We were going to be married as soon as his divorce became final. Did he have to mention a letter? Letter? A sealed envelope he left with his attorneys to be opened in case of his death. No. 
We seldom spoke of things like letters, Mr. Diamond. There's more behind this smile than meets the eye. Hmm? I was commenting on the inscription on the picture. Oh. Yes. That gave that to me only, only a couple of days before it. Oh, excuse me, Dad. I didn't realize you had company. C come in, Dad. Mr. Diamond, this is my father. How do you do? Mr. Diamond's here to ask some questions about Bart. Oh, yes, that's awful, isn't it? I knew Bart Saxon from the day he first went into business for himself. He's a fine boy. Oh, Lou Ann, why don't you run along to your room? I'll try to take care of Mr. Diamond. You sure you're all right? She's taking this all rather hard, I'm afraid. Well, Mr. Diamond, sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Well, now, just exactly what is it you want to know? Well, you knew Bart Saxon uh, very well then, did you? Well, I suppose I know him about as well as anybody. I was one of his first clients, probably his biggest. Nobody ever really knew Bart Saxon too well. Why was that? Well, with all his charm and honesty, he had a certain reserve about him. That's one of the reasons he was such a good investment counselor, I suppose. He knew your family secrets are safe with him, so to speak. And your daughter gone with him very long. If you mean, was she responsible for the breakup of his home? No. From the day I first met Bart Saxon, he never got along with that woman he married. No offense, Mr. Mathers. Being such a good friend of Mr. Saxon's, did he ever mention anything about changing his will? No, why? Is that what this is all about, his will? Well, I don't know, but he left all his money to his wife, and uh, his attorney finds this rather strange in light of the fact he was planning to remarry as soon as possible. <laughs> you certainly don't expect my daughter to contest the will. I assure you, Mr. Diamond, I have enough money to buy and sell Bart Saxon's legacy, no matter how much it may be, many times over. You see, Mr. Meadows, this is about a letter that was, uh, stolen. We think it might have changed the will. I'm sorry, Mr. Diamond, I don't know anything about it. And really, from my point of view and my daughter's, it's entirely unimportant. As a matter of fact, if you're searching for this letter, thinking that it might be of some value to her, I'd appreciate it very much if you dropped the entire matter. It only serves to remind Luann of Bart Saxon. I think such memories are better forgotten by a young and impressionable girl. You may have a point. No girl as lovely as your daughter should be burdened with anything save uh, pleasant memories. <laughs> Mr. Diamond, for a private detective, you have a refreshing outlook. You should read the poetry I write. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Mathers. Let me show you up. Figuring that the intrepid Lieutenant McGo might have learned something about my two hood playmates by this time, my next stop was John Law's domicile. Oh, hello, Charles. What brings you to the lion's den? My call to him. Close the door. Where do you think you, you are, Warren? You heard from my sparring partners yet? No. Maybe better. You know how much Saxon's estate weighs in at? Well, from the glassy glaze and your famed blue orbs, I'd say it was quite a bit. Tell him. Almost a half million dollars, Rick. Wow. Say, I had to look into this investment counseling business myself. The Internal Revenue is looking into it already. He never reported more than 25000 a year in his life. Where did he get it from? I have no idea. As a matter of fact, it may even be more. Well, I'm going to look at that apartment myself. This thing gets fishier by the minute. Hold on, Isaac Walton. I'll go with you. I'm interested in this sketch myself. thought just came to me, Lieutenant. Someone has been here before us. I don't know how you ever guessed it. They had a distinct advantage. They knew what they were looking for. Well, just in case they didn't find her, let's us have a look, huh? Okay. Lieutenant, this is getting us nowhere fast. Yeah. What do you got there? A shoe repair ticket. Great. I can't tell. Maybe they'll fit. Oh, don't look at me like that. You haven't found anything. Come on, I'm going. All right. There was one thing that puzzled me about that shoe ticket. It was for a shop way out in Queens. I decided to head out that way. 
485 for half soles. Well, it was outrageous, but then I could put it down to my expense account. Now, not you two guys again. Get inside. Look, if you'd like these, you just ask for them. Get inside. Fun diamond. It is not polite. Thank you, Emily Post. All right, Diamond, where is it? Where is what? If you're going to make me mad. I've been very nice up to this point. You've been a perfect joy. But I still don't know what you're looking for. All right, Diamond, playtime's over. Now, where's the negative? Negative? Film! Picture! All right, be a jerk. I'll get it out of you one way or another. Harry! Let's go visit your buddy Cooch. Up the ladder. Come on! That was good enough to eat? Yeah, and I feel just like feeding them to you. Now look, Rip, they've been bisected, dissected, examined, x-ray tested. You know what we found? No pair of socks? Not even that. Huh? Did do. Yeah, not that they've done us much good. Well, we know something now. We know we're looking for film. Like what? I don't know. Marilyn Monroe, Ava Gardner? But we'll find out, won't we, men? I don't know from whom. From whom? Did you hear that, Mac? Now, this man has class. Too much class to be a stupid syndicate who'd like his pal there. Syndicate? <laughs> what syndicate? Now, cut the low comedy. We know you're brought in the West Coast as muscle men, but on whose orders? Order? Lieutenant. There are a couple of tourists in to see the big city. You know, the Empire State Building, Rockefeller's Plaza, Radio City Music Hall. We forgot the Statue of Liberty. Well, thanks. I'll put that on my list. No, I wouldn't hurry. I think you're going to visit the tombs first, courtesy of the district attorney's office. Well, Harry and I hate to impose. No imposition. It'll be a pleasure. Coach, tell us why was the syndicate interested in Bart Saxon? Was Was the investment counseling bit just a front? You're wasting your time, Rick. A couple of days in the tank, they'll open up. On what grounds? Armed assault, illegal possession of firearms, and I got a batch of them. Attempted murder. Wait a minute. We didn't kill Bart Saxon. We didn't even get the town yeah, right. Shut up. No. We ain't gonna swing for something someone else broke. Half with the attempted murder these guys meant was his. Tell us about the murder, Harry. There wasn't no murder. It was an accident. You know that. Harry didn't know what he was saying. Look, Lieutenant, we ain't gonna talk no more. Not until we get a lawyer. Concealing evidence is a rough rap, Harry. I ain't saying nothing. Nothing I see my mouthpiece. I'm standing on the fifth. Nothing. On the grounds I might tend to intimidate myself. Believe me, Harry, we wouldn't want to intimidate you. All right, get him out of here. Huh? 
Homicide Homicide. With murder on my brain, I went to call for a second time on the lovely Lou Anne and her millionaire daddy. Murdered? Syndicates? That's hard to believe about Bart. To think that Lou Anne nearly married him. Well, hold on a minute. Uh, let's not convict the poor guy without giving him a break. After all, there's no evidence that he was in the syndicate, only that he was murdered and their goons knew about it. Oh, poor Luann, I wanted her spared all this. Well, the police will be as sympathetic as possible. Police? Well, they'll want to question her. Under the circumstances, she and Saxon were very close. Uh, by the way, where is she now? Well, she drove out to our country place for a couple of days. She wanted to get away from all this for a while. Uh, excuse me, I have the address. I'd like to go out there first thing in the morning. Now, you look here, Diamond. I want you to leave Luann alone. She's been through enough already. I appreciate your feelings, Mr. Menace, but this is a murder case. Hard at the time for chivalry, even with the refreshing out of black mind. Please leave. Now. Well, you're not helping her any. The police will question her. And Good day, Mr. Diamond. Good day. <laughs> Was someone just here? No, it's nothing important. Mm. Luann, I want to ask you something. But before you answer, I want you to think very carefully. Did Bart ever tell you about any of his business friends? I know. You never heard of anybody who might have hated him, did you? No. Just his wife, perhaps. You know, that trip to Europe we've been putting off for so long, I think it's a good time for both of us to take that trip now, tonight. I'm going to try to get on a late plane. But why? The police think Bart Saxon was murdered. Murdered? Before we get back... I think this whole thing will have blown over. You don't think I killed him, do you? Look, pretty boy, you're digging in the wrong spot now. I'm telling you to move. I'm digging anywhere that looks soft. This is right now that's under your feet. Wait a minute, Herb. Mr. Diamond, I'm going to level with you. The reason that Bart and I fought so much was because he was in the syndicate. He was a cover man for them. He funneled off all kinds of loose dough, illegal-type businesses. See, you shut up. Why should I? Because you won't get any of the dough he left if you don't shut your yap. Now, you get out of here. Mrs. Saxon, do you know any of the men with whom your husband worked? See you. Now, I told you, get out You have to learn things the hard way, don't you, Herbie? Now, Mrs. Saxon? No, I swear it. I never mixed in with Bart's business. Okay. But unless someone else can be found for the pansy, it doesn't look too good for your team. Right now, you've got the best motive. Mr. Diamond, I was always behind Bart all the way. When he flipped for that society dame, I hated him. But I never hated him enough to kill him. I just got an idea. It's not too bright, but it's an idea. Don't go away. We got back from the country in record time. Country? Well, just what are you doing? More behind this smile than meets the eye. Well, we can only hope. Mr. Diamond, I... Thank you, Mr. Diamond. I'll take that if you don't mind. Your bad upbringing is beginning to show. Don't you know it's impolite to point? I'm glad you found that, Mr. Diamond. I thought the envelope would be enough. But it contained photocopies, which meant that a negative was still in existence. What's on it? Proof that you were Bart Saxon's contact in the syndicate? That your investments were made with stolen money? I don't understand, Dad. Go on upstairs, Luann. This doesn't concern you. Well, on the contrary, it does. It was her boyfriend you killed, wasn't it? What? It's not was he holding up for more dough? Threatening to blow the whistle on you? Go on upstairs, Luann. Diamond, I'm going to kill you for this. Dad! Give me the police. And I speak to Lieutenant McGough, please. And Mac, this is Rick. I got your killer for you. And Mac, this one isn't afraid of being intimidated. 
Not by anything in this world, anyway. 